Hi everyone. My name is Mikhail Koshinov and I'm technical marketing engineer within Mascale Infrastructure Group. And today we are going to talk about new addition to Crosswork Automation Portfolio, which is Crosswork Qualification Environment. With this product, you should be able to speed up the innovation through faster certification of newest hardware and software within Cisco. Let's review the agenda of our session today. At first, we'll start with current SP network challenges. We'll touch base on the main issues which operators are facing nowadays, and we'll show, showcase how CQE can address them later in the talk. Of course, we need to talk about future of network operations, because we need to think ahead and plan in advance how it will look like and what steps we should take in order to uh, move our future closer. We will go into CQU overview and value proposition for, ho for whole product. When we will uh, talk about the playground, which is new functionality available within CQE and how it could, could help a uh, product to be certified in your lab. Of course, we will need to touch base on the architecture because it's a crucial component and it, it's crucial to understand what's the key pieces of software deployed behind the scenes. And last but not least, from the component perspective, I'm going to talk briefly about CQE Kit because we develop a powerful SDK and I want to show you the components involved into this SDK. And major part of this presentation would be dedicated to the demo of CQE itself so you would be able to see how it can benefit to yourself. Let's start. Currently, service providers are facing challenges within their networks. When you want to uh, deploy a new use case in your topology or you want to certify a new hardware, usually before that you have a long certification cycle. And as uh, so far, based on our observations, every certification cycle would take about several months, which is not just a day or two. It's a significant amount of time. Of course, OPEX and CAPEX spend as part of each discussion because you need to procure expensive lab equipment, you need to do a lot of uh, operations, either way, automatic or manual, but still part of your total cost of ownership for the equipment. Network outages is the thing which we want to avoid by every mean. Production defects missed during certification, testing, cost us a lot and we want to minimize them as well. That's three main aspects behind the network challenges which SPs are facing right now. But let's take a look how we can think about our future and what could be done in order to move it closer. Future of network operations, three key aspects. It's automation and analytics, and qualification of the environment. At first, you should be able to reduce the qualification cycle from month to days. With CI and CD pipelines enabled at each aspect of your topology and software delivery, it should be just in your DNA. CAPEX and OPEX rationalization should be implemented for testing and validation purposes. Of course, the more defects we are catching during certification cycle, the better. And all of it will include uh, the modern cloud-based like, testing and monitoring technique available for you on demand from anywhere. As I mentioned, CQE is the newest addition to Crosswork Automation Portfolio. When we talk about this portfolio, we usually mention three days of life in for the network device. The day man minus one responsible for preparation, planning, integration, and designing your future topology. And CQE targets this day minus one. If you have way which is one automation engine uh, available. It helps you a lot because it's a powerful, flexible 
STN platform. It abstracts and simplifies your one environment while making it fully open and programmable. And you can deploy innovative services much faster. CQE will address your certification cycles, so all your canary deployments would be taken care of with CQE. Once we're starting to go to day zero, we need to talk about implementation. And with implementation phase, we have multiple components available for our customers. Data Gateway is the main uh, recipient for all your information. Stream whatever you desire and Data Gateway will digest this information for further processing. NSO is a good friend and solid addition to that portfolio. It's industry-leading software for automating services across traditional and virtualized networks. Serious, serious providers can use NSO to add, change, and delete services without disrupting overall service and help ensure that services are delivered in real time. And now we are moving to day one and beyond, which means operation, optimization, and analytics. And we have a lot of software available in here. Let's start with Trust Insight and Network Insight. Those products are cross-work cloud services coming at a critical time. Those allow operators to assess integrity. Those allow operators to assess integrity of network devices and routing information. In a recent interview, um, 89% of SP responded that trusted infrastructure is truly critical to their business strategy. The next component is health inside. SPs can learn and measure the, the health of their network by running immediate network health analysis. With Situation Manager, you would be able to reduce time to remediation for problems that may occur on your network. Machine learning techniques reduces noisy alerts to pinpoint issues quickly. Further algorithms suggest fixes and enable ops teams to collaborate on the resolution quicker. Change automation allows you to safely execute operational tasks with structured workflows. Lastly, the Crosswork optimization engine automates traffic engineering for our converged SDN transport solution. You can check se separate uh, talks on Crosswork product family available during Cisco Y. And this talk would be focused on Cisco Crosswork qualification environment. With Crosswork qualification environment, you enable network validation in three simple steps. Agility is the first one. With Agility, you just select your network validation platform of a choice. You pick the topology in your premise or rent one from Cisco. As an outcome, you will have faster time to market, where you can focus on your services and not on the certification. With quality step, you pick the network application and features which you want to deploy in your network and you can validate them through CQE. As an outcome, you have better quality of software deployed in your network and better confidence in that software. Cost is a significant part of every discussion, and CQE automatically builds a CD pipeline for your deployment. So you have CI-CD approach enabled for your network certification from day minus one. As a result, you will reduce the certification cost and amount of manual labor for each new certification cycle. CQE was born internally as product to raise our software quality bar even higher. We contributed around 10k test cases for our own purposes and now we make it available to our customers. There are 35 automation packages which separated by the functionality. So whatever major functionality you can think of, we will have automation packages for it. It could be BGP, ISIS, manageability, ACLs, whatever you desire. Six iOS XR platforms supported, but we are not limited to XR only. 
in the CQE kit discussion, I'm going to showcase you how we can onboard another platform and start writing tests for it. 500 test cases running daily. With just one click, you can get 60% of the coverage for your platform. This is heavily adopted internally. We have around 500 engineers, which makes CQE better on a daily basis. What's the major blocks behind the CQE itself? The first one is the automation packages. With automation packages, you focus on faster deployment, you have your feature functionality covered by AP, and this implies for your current and next generation platform. You just reuse what's already written and apply to your particular use case. The qualification kit is the nice uh, SDK which we built internally. It allows you to abstract all the major components of your like, network device automation. We have traffic generator, handlers, features, logging, reporting functionality built in into uh, CQE kit and you can just like import it uh, right away. And of course, it's Python based. You'll love it for sure. A lot of smarts built in into CQE. The CQE smart build allows customer to upload their configuration into like the web interface and measure coverage just in two minutes. Right from that coverage, you can build your test run right away. We want testing to make it easier. The more data we gather, the smarter we became. And Smart Debug stimulates faster failure analysis of automation package runs, provided insight into all device events, finding bugs, showing stats on the tests, and much more. A lot of smart functionality and intelligence built behind. Recently, we announced a completely new addition to the CQE. It's called CQE Playground. What is it? The overall playground is remote access to free router hardware topologies with traffic generator built-in. It's web-based, you do not need any uh, special accesses, just a CCO account. We have a flexible infrastructure behind to add any new hardware or modify the testbed based on need. No VPN requirements, you can access it from anywhere. You can control the duration and we have modern reservation uh, system for your testbed. You pick the golden ISO image with uh, applicable SMUs and they will be loaded directly on the device. We have few alternatives as well. DevNet is here for you with sandbox environment, or you can go through traditional met method with CPOC and EFT, but currently we know that a lot of uh, customer trial affected by the time, uh, by the COVID, and we are here to help with playground. So you can like remote access the testbed and start manual testing right away. We have currently available three top, uh, topologies of mixed NCS 5500 and um, traffic generator, and also one topology with Cisco 8000 available. But we are planning to do more. So stay tuned on newest pro product announcement. How CQE deployment look? Let's review the architecture of a product. We can start with Cisco premises and Cisco internal infrastructure. We have two types of test beds internally. One for our own internal consumption, on which we run tests on a daily basis. And another one is a Cisco test bed available for reservation. Both are pretty similar test beds, just one of them available through DMZ and another one we are using for internal testing. We have a database running locally, which uh, connects uh, 
to DTTS database and we can like tie two things together. Of course, few libraries are running uh, locally to execute the CQE engine and this usually runs on the separate UCS node. And there is only one requirement for that, that UCS node should have a connectivity to the internet. The CQE cloud is fully cloud hosted component. Currently it's hosted on AWS and we have all results available within those machines. For each customer, we create a new database, so customer A will not interfere with customer B. Analytics engine built in, uh, in the background, and we can deliver smoothless update to web user interface. And you have your results available on demand 24 by 7. The beauty of cloud-based approach that we can deliver a smoothless update and you will not manage the life cycle of CQE cloud. That's on us. If you decide not to rent a testbed from Cisco and go with your own, we, we are willing to support you. You can deploy your own testbed and just install few components from CQE itself on a separate UCS machine. It could be any generic compute node. The only requirement to have accessibility to the internet. It can be done through VPN tunnel if you have a strict InfoSec policy. Okay, let's review the architecture workflow. Let's say you decide to deploy testbed on your own. As a first step, you need to prepare your testbed in the lab. Most probably you are picking few XR devices, you are writing a JSON file which would describe the testbed and you are good to go from that point of view. Then you will enable your CQE Connect SDK to enable automation packages. And all communication going through the uh, CQE cloud portal through your CCO account. Once you have testbed registered and available on the CQE cloud, the server which depicted in green uh, in the bottom will communicate to your testbed. Okay, let's talk about CQE deployment architecture workflow. At first, customer decides to build their own testbed, which are available in the lab. They grab few XR devices, interconnect them, and providing a JSON file, which depicts exact topology and all credentials to access this testbed. The JSON file is the mechanism to allow CQE identify how the testbed will look like and where exactly should it connect. You will have a separate compute node, which will include few software pieces. It will be basically like Jenkins servers with few libraries and few Docker containers available for um, on-prem deployment. The only requirement for your compute node would be internet access to the, from the node itself. When you are using your CCO account, to interact with CQE Cloud Portal. And that's basically it. You can reserve your testbed and start uh, the reservation or execution based on your testbed availability and CQE is good to go. You have test logs and test results periodically updated on the portal. Let's say you are going for a scenario with Cisco Lab. It makes things even simpler because you do not need a separate JSON file anymore. It will be just on Cisco premise. So you would be able to reserve it through system and Cisco testbed would be uh, available in a dropdown. The rest of the steps would be pretty much similar compared to previous scenario 
because you will modify and adjust your specific test or available through security kit and you will just like re conduct any required changes on the existing test base. I want to touch base on automation package structure as well because it's a crucial component of the uh, CQE. The automation package is just a collection of test automation separated by functionality. We have APs for BGP, ISIS, OSPF, manageability, ACL, BFD, and many others. Automation package utilizes CQE development kit for APIs. They run on a multiple platform and we can switch like, between the CLI and data models. The only requirement for automation package to operate smoothly is the topology file, where you provide all your information about routers, switches, services, interfaces, links, remote power supplies, and the other uh, required details, and the AP input file, which just a logical topology definition, some more information about it, and scaling. I will showcase you automation packages in action during the presentation. Important part of the CQE is CQE Kit. It's Python-based SDK, which we develop internally, and you can see how many like, comments went through. Um, that project is updating like, pretty frequently, a lot of contributors, and this is uh, available to our customers. If our existing test doesn't fit their parameters or just their, requirement, their requirements, you can modify it based on your need. What's inside the CQE kit? We rely on three major public open sourced libraries. First one is PyTest. PyTest is de facto standard in Python testing community and you will see it across many Python projects. And this is very easy and straightforward to utilize and you can learn from, from us in that scenario because you just grab the CQE kit, you will see how tests are written and you will be driven by example. The other two important components uh, which embedded into CQE Git is TextFSM and NetMiko. NetMiko is multi-vendor connection library for accessing devices and uh, communication. We use NetMiko heavily for our access to the boxes and this is easily extendable to our operation systems. Text FSM is a popular parser for like semi-formatted output. You can create a patterns over the register them and we, this library will help you to parse the output from the box. With three major uh, open source libraries, you can see that the CQE kit should be easily extendable. And I will just sh show, uh, showcase you one example for adding a new operation into a system. Let's take a look at it. Let's say we want to register a new operation system uh, for the CQE kit. We can register just XE, for example. At first, we are creating and registering the template showcased in the first gray uh, rectangle. When we add in quick uh, text FSM file to the templates, which can parse the content. That's one time exercise per new operation system and just gives you an idea how easy it's add the system. That's step number one. When we are writing a sample test, we add parser to corresponding OS folder as an example below. When pattern added, we are going through the sample test. And sample test is really easy. 
we just import the topology from the file. We import like logger capabilities and interface manager available from future library. We register the topology file which name which called interop.json and we are making sure that this file is available for us. When we retrieve the device information like R1, such as an example, and we connect the device. After the device, uh, after on device, we execute the common show version. Also, we'll just do a minor uh, modification of the interface on this device. And once like this test is registered, we'll just execute that, and you can see that finished test passed for test verify XE. That's it. That's all required steps to validate uh, the. Uh, newly added platform. Now we are good to switch to demo. Let's go into it. On my screen right now you can see cqe.cisco.com and on cqe.cisco.com it's our main landing page for getting access to the CQE. Basically you just have uh, information about the product over here and you can retrieve more information uh, regarding it. Let's sign in to the product itself. My CCO account would be utilized for that purpose. And as you can see, there is like my profile picture over here or avatar and recommended links based on my usage from CQ itself. On the left sidebar, we have main workflows. This is our main stops for checking the CQE capabilities. Let's start with the testbed because it's the first and uh, solid component to showcase. We have a lot of testbeds available. Some of them uh, have different uh, purpose and uh, different platforms. I will showcase you one, for example. This is Cisco 8201, where we have multiple pieces uh, connected together. At first, we have multiple compute nodes available for downloading the image from servers because we have Pixie functionality built in into CQE. Then we have remote power supply to automatically like restart the device when needed if something stuck or for any other purposes. So we have more flexibility in terms of remote power supply. And let's unlock the configuration and we can see the testbed. We provide a lot of connectivity between devices and this is our latest uh, hardware, which is uh, Cisco 8201. And in this testbed, we have three nodes, NCS55A1, two of them, and one Cisco 8201. Also traffic generator built in over here. And we have multiple connections to each boxes. We have legend available in the bottom right corner and some more information available in the JSON file. Let's take a quick glance at a JSON file. In the beginning, we provide all credentials for our box. And this is required for CQE to identify how we can connect to it. We have a nice like, uh, visual uh, enhancement to the standard JSON file, so we can just like uh, fo fold uh, things easily. When we add uh, debug engine for like, collector purposes, and I will showcase you it uh, run running live in the CQE. Also, we just like have few other entities over here. We have management server available and all required IP addresses. For each node, we create the uh, information about um, interfaces, how we can re reach out, how devices are interconnected, so we can like retrieve all information regarding like, each node. And it's an extensive file, but it gives you an idea how to connect to your device. Also, let's not forget about compute, because it can be used for various purposes during your setup. 
if you want to install like some third party application of the box and want to do to conduct some like external tests as well. So we have all of that described into this like nice JSON file. And usually we recommend to run some linters after you construct construct it, because yeah, it's better to make sure that no redundant comma or some other type of typo get into your file and just like messing with your topology. Okay, so we got an idea about JSON file. Let's take a look. Um, here's just uh, the, uh, the location of our file, a little bit of description, the topology type, and few more parameters uh, applicable to the CQE. That's how a typical testbed looks like, and we can um, leverage physical testbeds, we can do virtual testbeds, so we are flexible in general in terms of um, selection of what do we deploy in the CQE. And CQE fits very nicely for all um, scale testing, performance testing, because we have traffic generator available in here. So just different type of functionality and feature testing built in over here. Okay, once we uh, we have uh, a quick glance at the testbed, let's take a look at next component, which is package, automation package. Yes, we have a lot of them available. And whatever we type, we will just go and scroll to see what uh, exists over here. And solid amount of test already like, uh, written for each automation package. I would just like type BGP and you will see automatic like, uh, selection from the uh, search, uh, which already uh, displaying results on the page right here. Okay, we, we can do this exercise a few more time and let's take a look at ACL. When we click just on the package, we have information about package owners and who developed the model to this particular package. And few more of existing parameters, few more um, sub packages because we have hybrid ACLs, we, we have uh, access based forwarding and few other um, tags which we want to mention or may need to mention. So, uh, so we have this functionality uh, included for better organization of the tests. Okay, let's go to the test cases and you can see the description of the test. So this test, genera uh, test documentation generates automatically from Python files and if we take a look at the uh, repo, you can see that Kafi um, uh, uh, AP, which was like the previous name for a product, contains uh, all mentioned uh, automation packages. So it's just like a very uh, dynamic repo which we are running over here. Let's go back to the tests. Some tests would be uh, much simpler compared to each other. Let's say that uh, first uh, test over here is uh, could be a little bit tough, but let's take, uh, for example, BGP test. And I want to open it right away. BGP 392 test cases. Okay, as you can see, test basic checks, test underscore BGP underscore sessions. That's pretty simple test, which will just establish uh, BGP sessions between two devices. And after this session would be up and running, the test will succeed. That's very basic test. But we have much more in terms of the like, functionality and a level of deepness for each and every test which we wrote. Because we need some simple test and we are going to into more sophisticated uh, use cases with new tests. And we have a lot of tests as you saw before. Also, as I mentioned, you have nice folding mechanisms available to you in automation package. BGP flows back. Let's just fold it a few, multi, uh, few more times and you will see an example. Okay, so 
how do I pick the test? There is nice functionality called uh, Smart Build. And I'm going to showcase it to you right here, right now. What I will do right now, I have a configuration device stored um, on my laptop. I will just grab it. And this is just uh, one of the configs from my device, uh, which have few routing protocols, which have few connectivity uh, parameters. And this uh, retrieve from NCS 5501. Let's go and select the platform family. Okay. Let's upload the configuration. As you can see, this is like my conf configuration from May this year. So pre pretty, pretty new and the image is fresh. Upload. It will take around uh, two minutes to retrieve the run list, which we can build out of this exact configuration. Let's wait for a moment. Okay, as you can see, we already have few matching test case which are showcased on the right side of the screen and the security doing its like smart capability to identify applicable test. As you can see out of like routing BGP, um, we need only like 16 test cases for which particular configuration because config uh, for BGP on this device was pretty primitive, whereas just like uh, eBGP and not much beside it. So. For CQ, it's enough to have 16 test cases. And actually, we can select only some of them because probably maybe we will not need every test case for this particular configuration. The analysis uh, would end uh, in a few seconds and we can just like proceed with creating a run list from that configuration. So we can select a requ required automation package sub-select the test cases in this automation package and we can proceed right away. Okay. As you can see, 24 packages involved into testing for this particular configuration. 500 test cases identified with approximate 70% uh, coverage. Don't be scared by runtime uh, for the test execution because it will uh, require extra time to wipe the box to install a fresh image, to install like all related RPM. And this is easily reproducible once you set it once. So we will just like uh, press build all. We will identify like uh, mic demo CQE like seven first. We will go into NCS5500 and NCS 5501 selection of the platform. Save as a run list. And as you can see over here, we can already like submit those test cases. We can see what's inside and just like pick whatever whatever we want. Uh, we want from here amount of test cases. We can like withdraw. We can save this run list and uh, just return back. After submission, we need to uh, pick an image, an RPM, SMU, description, few other parameters for the CQE kit and bake option. And bake basically will install the image uh, for your utilization. But because of the time restrictions during the session, we will just showcase few output from executed runs already because I don't want you to wait uh, during the demo with me and we have a lot of nice runs running daily so I can showcase you some of them we have some nice and interesting uh, troubleshooting techniques involved so I will just cancel this let's take a look at the output from existing runs in order to save time and just like fast, uh, faster uh, showcasing the output. I will just open a few runs which were executed before and we have our uh, around like 32 test cases uh, 
succeeded, 27 of them failed. I'm not particularly interested about the like, succeeded case because it's no fun, but for failed test cases, it's interesting to figure out details behind. Let's open a log from the test execution. We use Allure, which is open source uh, tool to build a like, uh, test report. And we can see a lot of information about these particular tabs and can grab whole STD out setup from the device. But that's only small aspect of what we are capable of. Uh, we can map the test to particular DDTS ID and you can see the, the current status of this DDTS and sever severity of it. Also, if test crashes frequently, you would be able to notice that because uh, it could be pure, uh, po poorly written test, it could be bug in it, or it could be a problem in the software itself, or it could be even hardware problem. We never know because we have deal in a complex uh, situations and environments. So it's good to have built-in intelligence available uh, and backing us from behind. Okay, you saw the log. Let's go into debug. And smart debug, it's a wonderful functionality, which gives you an idea how to troubleshoot uh, tests faster. We have two uh, outputs available over here. And one of them is syslog from the device, uh, which is on the right side. And one of them um, on the left is CQE log. And Technically, you have two outputs uh, correlated by time where you can retrieve more information about execution. And we would be able like, to match like, two things together and identify what, ha what happened exactly at each particular moment. So when you start to troubleshoot, you are not uh, limiting yourself to, uh, to the like, capabilities of your current tool because you have everything available in one place. Collector is pretty nice uh, functionality which we have over here because collector gets all your data for failed test. You are doing show tech support bundle, show tech PFI, show tech self, show tech OFA, and much more information from each particular no node. And you can see the node and you can see the information collected from devices, which is crucial for faster troubleshooting. So this is like pretty nice feature and you can grab those like tar files right away. Telemetry. Telemetry we gather from real time device execution and we can see what was uh, the CPU utilization, what's the processes and telemetry information available from each particular device. So we, we have all of them. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's good. And we can also select a process over here from telemetry. Last but not least is analyze. And with analyze, you can see which process created the uh, syslog notification, uh, what was the severity of this syslog generated. And you can see like more information based for each particular device. Uh, against which the test was executed. So that's just like one dashboard which helps you to faster troubleshoot. Let's take a look at another one. We have uh, machine learning capabilities uh, built in. There is two models which are already trained and we are constantly improving our outcome with machine learning techniques. So you have uh, an analysis of uh, probability, is it like script issue, is it like software issue from XR perspective, or is it like hardware issue? And let's take a look at debug over here. Like some machine learning techniques were applied and you can see that uh, pro software probability was around 100. We retrieve a lot of information like this. The more information we gather from our internal sources, the smarter we became. Um, last piece, which I want to uh, touch base uh, today uh, before closing this session, 
is the playground. And playground was just like recently announced and helps you to get access to devices from Cisco right away, right now, from any place in the world. Let's switch to the playground tab. And before uh, before we uh, jump into playground, it's worth to mention all my sessions, which you saw before, like in runs, it's based on the organization. So you can see only mine session or only from our organization and um, you, you have few selectors available here. So uh, customer A will not interfere with customer B for this product because it's separation is achieved based on database uh, separation. Let's go to playground now. As you can see, I have one 5500 testbed reserved for me. But what if I want to do a new uh, testbed reservation? Let's check the past sessions. Oh, where are what? So let's do a reservation for the new system. Okay, it would be Mike 8000 testbed reservation. I have few test beds available over here and you can pick any of them. I'm just going for uh, 8000 and we can see that Cisco 8201, which you saw previously, is available now. I can pick for how long I want this test bed to be available. It can be like for four hours, it could be for five hours, uh, whatever you prefer. Also, if someone from your organization is already like uh, occupying this test bed or it's like reserved by some other person, you can select preferred time. When do you want this like test bed to be under your name? So I will just like reserve it for future so you will see. And also I will select a golden ISO for that particular purpose. Good. Uh, now I can schedule my session. And you can see it in upcoming sessions. You can see the who initiated the session. And let me increase font actually. You can see who initiated the session, when it will start. You have few options to clone the session or delete it. And uh, for existing quick running testbed, I have already a uh, capability to extend the session. This is testbed uh, NCS 5508. And I want to mention this, those are physical devices available for, for, for you right now. You can see the simplify version of the testbed over here. You have four hours left for this like, uh, testbed to be uh, uh, running and for your manual testing. And basically what we have in playground, it's the COI connection to each and every box. Don't be um, scared of the like, simple representation of this testbed. When, once we will go into interactive mode, you will see how solid the connectivity between the devices. And you have whole legend in the bottom right corner. By the way, once uh, testbed is available for your utilization, you get email notification and we also have integration for Webex Teams. Okay, click a bit and we see traffic generator in here. That's important as well. Okay, let's go back to simple and what do we... Uh, let's, let's start to connecting to device. Show version, show hardware model location O FPD and you can see that this is like a uh, re real device it's like physical uh, show IP interface brief and you can see all the like uh, bundles be between the boxes so it's physical device and you can retrieve uh, uh, whole information and do whatever manual testing you want to execute over here in the playground. 
So that's just a nice and uh, slick user interface, um, which sends like traffic in an encrypted way from Cisco DMC. You want to start to use traffic generator? We have the Ixia web interface pre-built for you. Let's go into it. Okay, so this is like um, Ixia Network Web Edition, and basically you use same CCO credentials to access it, and you can start to generate like traffic over here right now. And by combining multiple components together, the actual devices into like sophisticated connectivity schema and traffic generator in the same testbed, you can achieve and validate a lot of platforms for CPOX or EFT for new platforms, especially now when you are uh, when we are limited uh, in terms of travel or like uh, you know, moving between different locations, this functionality is become even more crucial. And let's le return to the playground. You can see my active session. Uh, I can destroy whenever I want it. I can reserve a new one, and. That's basically it for our demo today. Thanks for wa watching the demonstration. And if you're interested to learn more, please visit cisco.com slash go slash crosswork site or cqe.cisco.com. If you have more questions, just drop us a note at cqe-interest at cisco.com. That's easy. We will reach out to you and we'll try to address every your question. Don't forget about online session evaluation and thank you for attention today. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Bye.